Welcome to our lecture online. The following problem here is a simple circuit where we have a power supply, we have a resistor, and we have a capacitor, and we're asked to find the power supplied by the power supply and the power consumed or absorbed by the resistor and the capacitor. So here we have the equation to find the average power. Now what we need to do in each case is we need to know the current through the circuit, through each of the components, and we need to know the voltage across each of the components. Now, of course, we already know the voltage across the power supply. We still need to find the voltage across the resistor and across the capacitor. So let's start with finding the current first. What we can say here is that the current, I, is equal to the voltage divided by the total impedance. And so here what we could do is we have the impedance as a resistor and a capacitor combined. So in this case, that will be equal to 5 volts with a phase angle of 30 degrees divided by, that would be 4 minus J2. Now, to make that division, we probably want to change that to the magnitude and phase angle format. So this is equal to 5 with a phase angle of 30 degrees divided by... Okay, the magnitude of that, that would be 16 plus 4, that's the square root of 20. And that would be 4.47. And a phase angle of, so this is a negative here, so we have a 2 divided by 4, that's 0.5 in the negative direction. That would be 26.565 degrees. Okay, and if we divide one by the other, let's see here, 26. Uh, that becomes negative. We add that to 30. So that's a phase angle of 3.43 degrees. And the magnitude here would be 5 divided by 4.47. We get 1.119. 1.119 1 for the magnitude. All right. Well, actually, when I don't round it off, my might be better if I write an 8 there. Not that it makes a lot of difference in the third decimal place, but that's probably a little bit more correct. Okay, so now we have the current in magnitude and phase, uh, phase angle format. So now we need the voltage across each of the three components. Well, we know the voltage across here. How about the voltage across there? So in that case, the voltage across the resistor is going to be equal to the current times the resistance. We know the current, it's 1.118 with a phase angle of 3.43 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times the resistance, which is 4 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And let's see here. That times 4, that gives us about 4.47. 4.47 volts. And with a phase angle of 3.43 degrees. All right, so that's the voltage across the resistor. Now the voltage across the inductor. So uh, not the inductor, but capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor is the current times X sub C. So in this case, that would be 1.118 with a phase angle of 3.43 degrees. And we multiply that times 2 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Divide that by, let's see here. Divide by 4 and multiply it times 2. All right, there, that gives us a magnitude of 2.24 and the phase angle would be this minus that so that gives us a 86.57 degrees and that would be a minus and so that would be both of course in terms of volts so now we have the potential the voltage across each of the two components now we're ready to find the power supplied and absorbed by the various components so first let's take the power supplied by the source so the power supplied by the voltage source is equal to one half times I max. I max, that's the same for all of them, that would be 1.118. Multiply times V max, that would be five. And times the cosine of the difference in the phase angle, so that would be 3.43 for the current, minus, that's degrees of course, minus 30 the phase angle for the voltage, and let's see here, that gives us uh, 3.43 minus 30, take the cosine of that, multiply that times 5, times 1.118, and times 0.5 equals, and that's 2.5, and that would be watts. So that would be the power supplied 
by the power supply. So now we're going to take, now we're going to try to find the, the power absorbed or, yeah, absorbed by the uh, resistor, power by the resistor is equal to one half times the current, 1.118, the voltage across the resistor, 4.47, and that would be times a cosine of 3.43 degrees minus, and that would be, again, 3.43 degrees, because we would not expect to find any phase angle across the resistor, and so therefore, that would be the cosine of zero degrees, which is one. So now we have 4.47 times 1.118 times 1.5, and again, 2.5. So that's equal to 2.5 watts. But in this case, this is absorbed, and this is supplied. So the power supply supplies 2.5 watts, and the resistor absorbs 2.5 watts. What about the capacitor? Well, let's find out. The power across the capacitor is equal to one-half times the current, 1.118, times the voltage across the capacitor, which is 2.24, times the cosine of the difference between the phase angle of the current, which is 3.43 degrees, minus a minus 86.57 degrees, like that. And notice that uh, this would be equal to one half times 1.118 times 2.24 times the cosine of 90 degrees. And of course, the cosine of 90 degrees, that's equal to zero. So zero times anything else, that would be equal to zero watts. So the capacitor itself does not consume any power. That means that all of the power supplied by the power supply is consumed by the resistor and none of it is absorbed by the capacitor and that's how it's done.